It's time to do web hacking. This is the second part of AWS WAC video. We will now do more lab demonstration. We will look at our AWS configuration, EC2, VPC, load balancer, and WAF. In our previous video, we just compared the setup of on-premise versus cloud-based WAF infrastructure. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the internet. Action star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. I'm here at my AWS console homepage and we're going to access EC2 instance. And as you can see, we have one instance running. This is our containerized web server running Nginx. So I'm going to click instances running and this is the name, hack site for WAF2. This is the instance ID, the state is running. And you will also see here the public IP version for DNS and the public IP for IP version for address, excuse me. Now, if I click this tick box, okay, you will see more information down here. Okay, so these are the details. We have the instance ID, okay, it matches this information. We have the uh, auto assign the IP address, IP version 4, and here is the platform. It is Ubuntu Linux. Okay, now if I go up here, I will see both the public IP version 4 address and the private IP version 4 address. This matches what we have in our topology. We also have the public IP version 4 DNS, okay, EC2 13214, and we also have the private IP version 4 DNS. And we also have the VPC ID. If I open the VPC ID on um, another tab, you will see more information, okay? It will tell us the CIDR or the subnet 172.31.0.0/16. Now, going back to instance, I would like to know the load balancer configuration. So what I'm going to do is on the left pane, we'll click load balancers. Now, we have this load balancer created named WAP testing. It matches what we have in our topology. Okay, and we have the DNS name of this WAF. Okay, it is also mapped to this VPC ID. It's same VPC ID on our instance. All right, so if I go down here, we'll see more information. Okay, the description, the name is WAP testing, matches this one. This is the DNS name, and this is exactly what this tab is using. So it started WAF testing 1677. Okay, it's the same WAF testing 1677. So basically, the client accessing this um, load balancer via this DNS. The status is active, and uh, we also map the same VPC like what I mentioned. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click the listener, and the listener is uh, telling us that it listens to port 80, and we also uh, tells that the traffic will be forwarded to the Django hack site. This is the target group of our instance two, okay? Uh, the instance two, again, is hack site for WAF2. Next is I will click the integrated services. Now, this is where we will see that AWS WAF is enabled. As you can see, we have AWS WAF integrated with the name of SQLi Defense. Now, if I click this link, view web ACL, we'll see more details, okay? More configuration of our SQLi defense. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click rules. And look, okay, although we have our WAF enabled, AWS WAF, we don't have rules yet. So what I'm going to do next is I will go to our application. Okay, so this is the client side. We're accessing this web application. This is the six blog page. And we're going to insert injection attacks. 
the first thing I will do, or the first attack that we will do is we're going to do SQLI injection, SQLI or SQL injection, okay? And this is a simple query that allows us to change this website information. Um, you will see it here that the name or the title of this page is ticks. See that? Now, we're going to change this to action star, okay? So this is a simple update query. But if I insert this, it will change the title of this web page. And this is not supposed to happen because this is something that is sensitive. Only the administrator can change the title of this web page. All right. So we want to protect our website with this common SQL injection attack. How do we do it? Well, first, we need to go to the AWS WAF page and under rules, we need to add a simple manage rule groups. Okay, and uh, here in this page, you will have the option to integrate AWS WAF with many different rule groups. We have F5, Fortinet, Imperva, etc. But what we want to do now is we'll just use the native WAF rules. And uh, if I click this arrow under AWS manage rule groups, you will see uh, a built-in SQL database protection. Okay, we'll just enable this, and this allows us to uh, protect from exploitation of SQL database like SQL injection attacks. Okay, and uh, next is I'm gonna click Add Rules, and there you go. We just added a rule to protect our web server from SQL injections. This is just rule priority we don't need to change anything we'll just click save there now we'll go back to our web application okay the blog site and what i'm gonna do is i will just copy and paste this query and change the title to i am spoon man there if i click search what do you think will happen guys i'm gonna click search now As you can see, we're getting HTTP 403 forbidden response status code. This indicates that the server understands the HTTP request but refuses to authorize it. Why? Because it detected that this is a legit web attack. It's actually an SQL injection. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to log in. Okay, I'm going to click sign in. And I will log in as Spoonman, okay? And I will log in uh, using my password, okay? Now I am successfully logged in. It says here, welcome Spoonman. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this logo. So this will take me to the blog page itself. And uh, what I will do next is I will just insert a very simple cross-site scripting. So this is a JavaScript, um, and uh, this script tag and uh, this end tag um, allows us to create an alert box, okay? So I will just simply uh, use this, okay? Or I can modify this. This is just a test. So basically, it's just a simple uh, alert box with this message. This is just a test. And uh, if I click Submit, Okay, this will be successful, okay, uh, since the script is a JavaScript that creates an alert box, it is accepted. And we are now seeing an alert box with a message, this is just a test. So this is still bad because we are disrupting users. We are, they're not supposed to see that message because uh, it's not part of how the web application behaves. Now, what I'm going to do next is I will go back to our AWS and we're going to create another rule. So in this rule is a little more advanced. Okay, I will click add rules, but this time it's not manage rule groups. Okay, I'm going to create my own rules and rule groups. So first, we're going to name the rule cross site protect or XSS protect. Then the type will be regular. And the condition is, if a request matches this statement, 
will do a specific action. Now, let's configure the following statements. The first uh, statement or configuration statement is it inspects the body. So I'm going to select body and the content type should be plain text. JSON will be selected if the application is an API web-based application. But since this is a typical web application, we'll just use plain text. Match type will be cross-site injection attacks or contains XSX injection attacks. Next is text transformation. Okay, we will be adding for text transformation. These are HTML code or entity decode. I'm going to click add text transformation. URL decode. Where is that? There you go. And then I will also add lowercase. Next is I will add JS decode. There you go. Under oversized handling, I will select continue. Inspect the contents that are within the size limitation. And then the action is just block if it matches these conditions, okay, including the following statement. So I'm going to click add rule now. And there you have it, okay? We just add a new rule that protects from cross-site scripting. What you see here, this is just setting of rule priority. Which rule will be prioritized? It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to click save. Now, it's time to test again. So I will go back to our blog web page. And this time, we're going to add the same JavaScript, okay? It's still alert box. But we're going to uh, add a different message, okay? I am Spoon Man. There you go. So different message, but still a JavaScript alert box. I'm going to click Submit now. And as you can see, we are now getting HTTP 403 forbidden response status code. Again, this indicates that the server understands the HTTP request but refuses to authorize it. So basically, it understands that this HTTP request is a cross-site scripting injection and it locked the HTTP request. We have successfully configured our AWS WAF to protect our web applications from web attacks, specifically SQL injection and cross-site scripting. So, what do you think? Is cloud-based WAF better than the on-premise, such as Imperva, Akamai, and F5?